I've put together the easiest way to fine tune a large language model with LoRa or LoRang adaptation method for saving memory and computing power and let's not forget faster model training. Fine tuning a large language model is basically providing a generative model with a specific type of data for specific tasks and updating the model to get a new model which is more tuned or fine tuned towards better performing that specific task. Fine tuning a whole model with larger parameters can be a lengthy process and become computationally costly and burdensome on memory because of the optimization process and calculating the gradients and forward activations. Fortunately, alternative fine-tuning techniques such as PEFT or parameter-efficient fine-tuning are here to save the day, making it more efficient to train models compared to traditional methods. PEFT techniques such as prefix tuning and LoRa typically minimize the number of trainable parameters in a neural network, which makes them more adaptable and memory efficient. Now, if you've ever tried training a whole model, you know that it can give you results worthy of a standing ovation. We're talking about more accurate results and better overall performance. But then comes the challenge. We need to load a massive model into memory. So storing and processing a huge model becomes computationally and maybe financially expensive. But if you use a PEF technique such as LoRa, it allows small adapters to be tailored to specific datasets or users. These adapters are very lightweight usually between 6 megabytes to 8 megabytes only. This adapter approach introduces new parameters into the model for training purposes without increasing the total number of parameters. That's because these additional parameters are only added during training and not integrated as part of the original model, which means keeping the size of the original model constant while offering the benefits of parameter efficient fine tuning. LoRa basically breaks down the weight optic matrix, which is the result of learning via backpropagation, into two smaller matrices and uses these two smaller matrices to train the model and update the parameters instead of directly updating the original larger model. And exactly because these are smaller, they use fewer parameters and less computation. Here the rank of these two smaller matrices is depicted by R, which controls the size of these matrices. After updating the weights, these two matrices can then be multiplied to get the larger matrix. So given an input X, the final output H will be the sum of the original pre-trained weights and the updated matrix, which is the product of these two small matrices. Enough of theory. So let's see how this works in practice by fine-tuning a pre-trained LLM on a text classification task. And as always, the link to all the code and processes is in the description box so you can follow at your own pace. Just bear in mind that this tutorial is mainly a blueprint for showing you the steps and various configurations for fine-tuning with LoRa. So feel free to change any part of it as you need. As with the previous tutorial, we need the transformers library as well as PyTorch for the main operations, the datasets library to load out dataset from Hugging Face and NumPy for data processing. But because we will fine tune using the LoRa method, we will also need PEFT for the PEFT model and LoRa configuration and Accelerate for using the trainer on PyTorch models. If you'd like to add some evaluation metrics, install Evaluate too. The second step is to load our pre-trained model from Hugging Face. I'll be using Roberta base model, which is a transformer based model and an optimized version of BERT with improved sentiment analysis and text classification with its details as you see here. Both BERT and Roberta work with mask language modeling that I explained in the previous fine tuning video. I will leave a link to it in the description box for you too. The third step is to use a sequence classifier and a tokenizer on our model. Here I'm using the auto model for sequence classification and auto tokenizer from the transformers library and passing the model name as we defined earlier. Now, here is a cool step you can do to understand the structure of your model. By printing the model, you can see the names of different layers. For example, this encoder layer with these linear self-attention modules that we will have to specify soon when setting the LoRa configuration. Let's move on to the fourth step, which is loading our data set. You can load your local data or like me, use the Hugging Face data sets to get this Yelp review data set with a very large number of reviews and labels corresponding to one to five review stars. This data set can be both used for text classification and sentiment analysis and has a straightforward structure of text field for the actual review text and the label field for the review points. 
We essentially split the data into training and evaluation data sets and specify how many examples we want to include. Here I'm only loading 500 examples to make the training faster. But for any serious improvement of the model's classification, you want to specify a couple of thousands if your processor allows. Then we define how we want the data sets to be tokenized with this function. I've already talked about padding and truncation in my previous tutorial. So if you're new to fine tuning, check out the explanation because you will be most probably using them for your future training and fine tuning projects. Step five is the very important part where you set the LoRa configuration and define some parameters such as the rank of the update matrices that you get from the fine tuning process where low rank results in smaller update matrices with fewer trainable parameters. LoRa alpha is the scaling factor and controls the adaptation strengths and the target modules are the ones we found from printing the model earlier. These module names should be passed as a list of strings. Dropout is the dropout probability of the LoRa layers, LoRa layers where we drop out or remove some of the neurons to make the model less dependent of those neurons. This is done for applying regularization if you want to avoid overfitting the training data. The reason I'm setting this is because my data set is pretty small, which is a typical scenario where models overfit the training data. A larger value than this is also likely to cause the model to underlearn. More of these for future videos. Here I don't want the bias parameters to be trained to, so I'm keeping it to none. There are multiple task types that you can specify based on the main task you're performing on the model. For example, causal language modeling, text classification, sequence modeling, token classification, question answering, and feature extraction. Done with LoRa configuration and moving on to step six, where only in one line of code you get to the core of this tutorial, making a PEF model. So basically the PEF model is a base class in transformers to apply the PEF method and add the LoRa adapter to our model. The adapter here being those two matrices that I showed you in the beginning. As its name suggests, we use the get PEF model and pass in our model and the LoRa configuration that we just said. You can print a number of trainable parameters like this. As you can see here, the trainable parameters are significantly less than all parameters. And that's exactly the point of PEFT, to be parameter efficient in fine tuning by only updating the weights of the last layer or the last few layers of the neural network. Soon you will see how easy this will be on your computer's processor and how faster fine tuning with LoRa becomes compared to the previous full fine tuning tutorial. For the seventh step, we have the advantage of additional arguments to define for training which gives us a lot more control over the behavior of the model and the output. But if these many parameters seem overwhelming, the convenient way is to just pass in the first one, which is defining a directory for the output files. And the trainer will handle everything else for you by treating them as default values. But if you're curious about what these parameters are, here's the side-by-side -side explanation. Output directory is the name of the folder to save the final model weights and checkpoints. If you're going to fine tune and test your model incrementally, set the override output directory to true as well. Evaluation strategy specifies if evaluation has to be done based on epoch or steps. Non-train epoch sets how many times to go through the whole training data set for training the model. The default is three times. As for the learning rate, each time the model weights are updated, this amount of change will happen to the model. Learning rate and batch size are related. For example, when increasing the batch size, we should reduce the learning rate. Pair device training and evaluation batch size options specify the batch size for training and evaluation datasets. The default is eight, regardless of whether the model is running on CPU or GPU. But if your hardware capacity is low, lower this batch size, for example, to four. Optim sets the optimizer for deep learning and model training. Adam W optimizer variants such as Adam W Torch use a gradient descent algorithm to find the minimum values of parameters that reduce the cost function. Gradient accumulation steps specifies how many steps to take before accumulating gradients before performing a backward update pass. It is to overcome the memory limits of your hardware if your defined batch size doesn't fit your GPU. The default is one. If you set gradient checkpointing to true, the operation saves memory at the expense of a slower backward pass. Similarly, group by length saves memory and speeds up the process by grouping sequences into batches. 
The maximum gradient norm is the value that you use for gradient clipping, depending on the specific model and data set you're using. The best practice is to choose a value that is large enough to allow the model to learn quickly, but small enough to prevent exploding gradients during backpropagation in deep neural networks. It helps with the stability and generalization of the fine-tuned LLM. Weight decay applies L2 regularization to the optimizer to prevent overfitting by adding a penalty to larger weights, except bias and layer norm weights. The default is zero, but as I talked about it earlier, if you have a small data set or like me have chosen a small number of examples from a larger data set, it's a safer option to avoid overfitting on the training data. Adam beta 1 and beta 2 hyperparameters of Adam W optimizer that we also used in the previous full fine tuning are the coefficients for computing running averages of gradient. These values that you see here are set to default. Now, this FP16 versus BF16 part is a bit confusing for most people, so I try to explain them as easily and as briefly as I can. So, basically, both these numbers are representations of floating point numbers with 16 bits. However, FP16 or floating point 16 has a smaller range but higher precision within that range because it uses 10 bit for the fraction part, whereas BF16 which is also called Brain Floating Point 16 from Google Brain, has a wider range but lower precision for fractional values because it uses 7 bit for the fraction. As you see, because FP16 can represent small fractional values within a limited range, it's better for deep learning tasks where precision is more important for you. It also lets you choose higher batch sizes while saving memory, whereas BF16 is used more in newer Ampere hardware and is a better option when your task needs a wider range with higher stability, for example when dealing with larger gradients. So if your GPU supports BF16, you can set it to true. Well, it didn't become brief, but we're at least done with the training arguments and on to the final step of fine-tuning, and that's to pass the PEF model, the training arguments that we just said, as well as the tokenized training and evaluation data sets, and initiate the model training. While this training blue bar is progressing, I just wanted to give you a quick tip when you get lots of errors with some of your imported modules. The chances are they haven't been fully imported. If you see this message, note you may need to restart the kernel to use updated packages after you've installed those libraries. A quick fix is just to start the kernel like this and rerun all your cells from the beginning. Here's the completed training process that took a fraction of the time compared to my previous tutorial where I fully fine-tuned the model. You will be surprised to know that with this huge difference in the training time, usually the performance of the fully trained model and the one trained on adapters are still comparable. You can add some metrics such as accuracy before this step for additional evaluation too, but here I'm just moving on to save the fine-tuned model in step 9 by simply using the save pre-train on the model trainer and passing the name of the folder where the model configuration file in JSON format should be stored. You should get something like this in that folder. We can take this a step further and merge the fine-tuned adapter with the base model while pointing to the same folder where the adapter configuration file is stored. This is done with the merge and unload method and then give it a name. You should see something like this in this folder. I know this was a lot to unpack, but hopefully you got the main process for fine-tuning with LoRa that you can essentially use with any model and dataset. But be aware that the model you've chosen should support a template for the input data that you're using with your dataset. If not, you need to write a function to format your input data accordingly. And if you'd like to fully fine-tune a model and test it, here's the video for you.